Hey gearheads and welcome to GT Garage Talk, a discussion about all things automotive. I am your host Corey and this week we dive into a topic that we started two weeks ago here on the podcast and that is the culmination of our epic road trip which was actually two in one and here in the studio I have with me my lovely co-host for the day my beautiful wife Holly. Hi. So uh, I, I alluded to this road trip being two in one because uh, you and I went to California right, with our son and your mother. Right. And then we spent some time there and then we came back in an entirely different way. Right. So uh, we've got two completely different stories to tell here on this mm-hmm. podcast and a little bit of time to do it. So why don't we dive in first to our trip out to California? Right. We took on the way there, and I will not lie, my sole goal in our trip on the way there was to see one of my best friends who lives out in the middle of nowhere in Midland, Texas. Very very apt description. (laughs) Yeah, it's really hard to get out there and see her. So I'm like, if we're going to be in that side of Texas, we're going that way. But it actually works out because um, not a lot of people know that... The, if you go through Midland and yep. out of Texas that way through El Paso and all of those, you are actually hitting up one of the United States' other historic highways, the Bankhead Highway. Which more or less was a happy accident, as you said. So on the way out... Well, we it was were... a happy accident for y'all, but I knew. Okay. <laughs> I knew we were yes. going to be hitting two historic highways yes. on this trip. So, yeah... Uh, the Texas's version of Route 66, basically. It's not just in Texas. Right, it right. It's across the state line. And as well. uh, then the other more famously known Route 66, Route 66. which we'll get into. But the a Bankhead bit. Highway is the first highway in Texas. Right, there you go. Yeah, See, was I knew the, they you were something. Yes, it was the first highway in Texas and hits up a lot of those. I mean, it's important to the growth of Texas because that was the only way to get trades through right. and and things like that and kept these um, early civilizations here in Texas um, alive and with food and yes. goods and such. So uh, we have at this point, as you and I sit down to record this, released two uh, YouTube videos on this trip to California and back. And our first video, we were researching fuel prices between Texas and California. And that was our trip out to California. Uh, We did drop in a little historical information and tourism information on the Bankhead Highway in that original video uh, covering the fuel prices from California or Texas to California, which ironically enough, not ironically enough, we planned it this way, but... Uh, Texas is historically the state with the lowest fuel prices. California is the state historically with the highest fuel prices. There are varying reasons that we will not get into on this podcast for those two distinctions. But uh, that that was my purpose of uh, the trip out there was to document fuel prices between California and L.A. And... Uh, we did discover, in fact, yes, <laughs> there is no surprise. Fuel prices are higher in California. The further we went west, the higher they went. We did actually find some surprise low prices along the way. Mm-hmm. But there there was a lot to see and do outside of our fuel price investigation along the way as well. Yeah, of course. I'm in the tourism industry, so it's no surprise that I... I already knew about a few attractions and then there were some things that I hadn't, there are some things that I had seen before that I wanted my family to see that they had not seen, such as Monaghan Sand Hills, Mm -hmm. um, the Meteor Crater in Odessa, those kinds of little touristy stops. But there were some things that I hadn't seen that I wanted to see, such as the replica of Stonehenge in in Texas, and that was also in Odessa, right? Yes. Yeah, kind yes. of right before you get into Odessa. So what made that stop even more interesting for you and I is we have been to the original, the actual Stonehenge. 
uh, outside of uh, London, right. like well outside of London, <laughs> and oh my goodness, it was so cold and windy that day. A little bit different out <laughs> in West Texas, but still rather cool for it the time of year. It was chilly that day, yeah. But uh, in, in true Texas fashion, the replica was made out of limestone, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I thoroughly appreciated it. I, I think Tucker appreciated it. Your mom definitely uh, yes. wanted to uh, stay a little bit longer, I do believe. But just yeah, that was the theme of our trip. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. I didn't want to throw her under the bus. I was, but yes, uh, I mean, there were so many different cool things to see. Uh, I, I go back to, you said, the meteor crater outside of Odessa. Mm -hmm. I jokingly, when walking up to it, they had like a circle walkway with dirt in the middle. Like, there, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, hole. Yeah. And I was like, is that it? Like, it, it was <laughs> maybe maybe eight feet in diameter, uh, if that. And I was like, is that it? And you thought I was pointing to the actual crater back behind it. <laughs> and couldn't get my dad joke in there with you on that. But it was interesting just going out there and reading about the crater itself because uh, of the bones and fossils mm -hmm. found in the area yeah. Do not compute with my idea of West Texas. <laughs> so if you... I think there's a lot of things that people don't get about West Texas, even people that live there. So, you know, we grew up in the Piney Woods and yes. I did a whole West Texas trip one right. year, it took two weeks. And that's all we did was West Texas. And, you know, I didn't know that pa when I went, I didn't know that Palo Duro Canyon was the second largest canyon in the United States. And I didn't know how big the Davis Mountains were. I was expecting Texas mountains, but they're like actual legit mountains. Mm -hmm. And um, you always hear about West Texas being flat. And it is, I'm here to tell you, but the <laughs> flatness in and of itself is mind blowing. I remember the first time I went out to West Texas, my friend and I were like, how far away do you think that house is? Like how far away we can see this car all the way across feels like the other side of the earth. Like how far away is that? And you can see all the way out there. So it's, you know, people all, I mean, I, if you want to be a negative Nelly, you can always be right. a negative Nelly, and people are always like, there's nothing in West Texas, and it's flat. But um, there is plenty to see in West Texas and enjoy. And um, if nothing else, you can see so many stars at night in West Texas. Stars at night are big and bright. <laughs> yes. So, uh, unfortunately, we were on a time schedule. Uh, there was yeah. only so much we could do on our way through. And there is so much more I want to see out there. I, I do want to go stargazing. I, I do want to see the Davis Mountains. You and I have not been out there together. Right. Uh, I, there There is more. So much more. So much more. Um yeah, my mom was like, oh, if we're going to be in West Texas, let's go to like Big Bend. And yes. all." And I'm like, yeah, that's like eight hours away. Like, it's really far. Like, it's not just like, let's pop on over to you. <laughs> Which, uh, so I, I've, dr I've been in a vehicle from Texas to Phoenix, Arizona. So I have made the trek west. But... In that trek, we went up to Amarillo and uh, across that way. I had not been from, we're an hour and a half, maybe two hours away from the Louisiana border. I have mm -hmm. not been from East Texas through El Paso. Mm -hmm. We could have made it in one day. Mm -hmm. It was a two-day trek for us. And it was all of two days. It was yeah. so much driving and just helped me fathom and grasp the hugeness of Texas in, in and of itself. Uh, just because, again, I had never made that trek before. Again, I... Uh, Movie magic being what it is, uh, I may have edited our uh, fuel price road trip to look like we crossed Texas in a single day, uh, but we did not. We stopped halfway through in Midland, and then 
Holly actually picked up in El Paso. So I drove us all the way through Texas over two days. And when you started driving, you took us through the last little bit of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and yeah, that's where we spent that night. And you drove into California some on our trip as well. So yeah, we you made got, it through those states quicker yeah, than Texas. Bing, bang, boom. <laughs> so it, it, it was it was a fun trip. And oh my goodness, just... Of course, we only hit like a teeny portion on our way there, a teeny portion of New Mexico. Right, right. Because of the way Texas and New Mexico butt up next to one another. Uh, mm-hmm. Because so much of Texas goes underneath New Mexico. But still, the fact of the matter is, I drove two days across Texas, and then in one day, in an afternoon, more or less, you drive in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona uh, to get us to our final stop in uh, Tucson for that evening. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a little sad that uh, just... It got dark on us so quickly because mm-hmm. the, the scenery out there, the sunset was amazing with the mountains and the view uh, in Tucson. And I'll, I'll say this now, it, it applies for the entirety of uh, this podcast episode, but just uh, you and I decided when making mm-hmm. this trip, we were going out uh, to be part of a, a wedding, to perform a wedding of one of our friends. We tossed up the idea of flying. Mm-hmm. And ultimately decided on road tripping and taking our son because we wanted to show him. We wanted to introduce him to travel. We wanted to show him this country he lives in. And that is a perk and a benefit you don't get when flying. Yeah, you can see stuff out the window. Uh, You can see the Grand Canyon, which we'll talk about later, out of your window of an airplane. But does not capture the majesty no, especially when you're talking about some of the places that we went to, ju- just starting with West Texas, is it's so quiet out mm-hmm. there, and you can hear the nature, and you can hear um, the wind blowing, and the birds singing, and stuff like that, and those kinds of things where you can really take a moment, and rest your mind, and enjoy the space that you're in, is worth driving a thousand more times. <laughs> yes. So uh, I think the only thing really giving us any amount of stress on this trip was the fact that we were kind of working and leisure travel and on a time schedule. <laughs> Outside of that, if we had just gone as our family, uh, it, it would have been just so great to take our time. We kind of flew by the seat of our pants. You did some research ahead of time. You booked a few places. You looked into how far we needed to get on certain days. Uh, But otherwise, we did kind of have a little bit of flexibility, uh, which worked to our benefit. And again, stayed in some amazing places. Thoroughly enjoyed uh, our time all the way through Texas. Uh, I had not been to Tucson, Arizona. I had been to Phoenix, but I hadn't been to Tucson, Arizona before. And so, you know, getting to see... I don't guess I realized that. I really like Tucson. Yeah. yeah. We didn't get to, we didn't spend a whole lot of time there no. this time, but... But just the scenery throughout, getting to see the saguaro cacti... Cacti? Cactuses? Yeah. Cacti? Cacti. I think you can say yeah. either one. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we have our own version of Texas cactus. Mm-hmm. They are in no way as big and majestic and uh, fragile maybe, as the saguaro cactus in Arizona. But, you know, that's that quintessential mental image you get of Arizona. Yeah. And... Again, I'll say that. So, you know how they have the the pinks and purples mm-hmm. and paintings of desert landscape. I mean, we saw that in real life. Yes. Like, it was it like exists. a painting. It, I mean, we're not just... that. The, it's not just a painting that people created in their mind. It is really what Arizona looks like. Yes. For the most part. Uh, So, yeah, yeah, my first time through uh, to Phoenix, uh, we turned and headed south, I believe, in Winslow and started coming through. Uh, I I was keeping track on my phone and I was like, oh, we're in a national forest. And I'm looking around and again, we live in the Piney Woods of East Texas. (laughs) I'm like, well, those are bushes. Like I, I could still see for miles and like, 
literally the vegetation was no higher than my knees. I'm like, we're we're in a national forest where's right forest? now. Where, where's the forest? But the further we drove, it was like that scene in Disney's Pixar's Cars where Sally and Lightning go for a drive, you know, start off in uh, Radiator Springs, which looks like Arizona. And then they end up in the Piney Woods. And it's like, <laughs> wait, what happened? That was like within half an hour of me proclaiming that to the entire uh, charter bus that, you know, this was embarrassing to be a national forest. We were legit in a national forest. And we saw a little bit more of that on our way back home. Uh, we stopped in Flagstaff on our Route 66 trip home and uh, nearly 7,000 feet of elevation. And again, pine trees galore. Mm -hmm. So cool. <laughs> and snow on the ground and yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get more into flag stuff but just we deal with the preconceived notions of texas everybody riding horse and <laughs> all, all yeah. that good stuff that more or less is associated with west texas uh, I, i'm sure people from arizona deal with the same and be like well you go to Flagstaff, it's totally different and it was so yeah, yeah snow on the ground in uh we were there in march and just like what no that's no uh, first of all i was i'm still done with snow after <laughs> in texas <laughs> snow in began last year one yeah but uh it is what it is did you have some more thoughts down there or? not until we okay. get to okay. you <laughs> So uh, the next day, going through Phoenix, we met up with a good friend and colleague of mine in Joe Sage from Arizona Driver Magazine. Uh, we'll link his stuff down below, but just chatted with him, found a fun local coffee shop called Trans Am there yeah. in Phoenix. You know, imagine that, two automotive journalists meeting up for coffee Finding a place called Trans Am. So cool. So awesome. You should definitely stop there. If you're in Phoenix. If you're yes. in Phoenix for coffee or they had mimosas and stuff too. It was it, also an art gallery. Brunch. It was an art gallery. It had a really cute uh, back porch where you could sit out there at the picnic tables with a basketball goal. Yeah. and So much fun. So much there. fun. Yeah. And we continued west. Uh, our ultimate goal was Simi Valley, California, but along the way, we couldn't not stop at Joshua Tree National Park. Yes. Which is, correct me if I'm wrong, because you were the one doing the research as I drove, is an intersection of two different deserts. Yes. And so it is like two very different state park or national parks in one. Yeah, so the, the two deserts combined, so you get two different kinds of landscapes. We actually came in not at the main entrance, right. um, and so we're driving through tons of rocks, yeah. basically, yeah. going, where are the Joshua trees? <laughs> seems which, like there which, should be at least, at least one. one. <laughs> at least one in the Joshua tree, which if you don't know what a Joshua tree is, it's kind of like... A succulent tree so it's not a big if you're from the piney woods it's not a big pine tree tree it is kind of like a larger succulent <laughs> um, yeah. but we didn't see any we saw a bunch of rocks and it was so sweet because when we were driving through this part the whole time tucker was saying this looks like radiator springs and he was so excited it was so cute <laughs> What are we doing? Going through the mountain. It looks like we're in sinks. <laughs> Mom, look! Look in front of you! I see it. What is it? A mountain. Another one. <laughs> he knew we were going to end up at Cars Land at Disney California Adventure and actually go to Radiator Springs quote unquote in real life so yeah it, he oh it was, he was like it, we're here we're at radiator springs it was so cute we got out we climbed on the rocks that was so fun and then when you get towards like where the actual the um, northern entrance yeah the northern entrance the the actual big entrance which you could go in e either way obviously um then you see all the the joshua trees and there's a i think you say at chohala 
um, garden, which right. are little cactuses that they look really soft. They look yes. like they're made of <laughs> velvet, touch. but don't touch them. But they're, it's really beautiful. I've seen pictures of it at the sunset and the, and we were actually there at sunset, mm-hmm. but and morning rise and people just capture these beautiful pictures in that garden and um and we i mean it was one of those places that you don't have to be a good photographer to take a good (laughs) picture in joshua tree so i'm really glad we put that on yes our stop and it's a must see if you're in that area be prepared to spend at least a day there like Mm -hmm. we got there in the afternoon and needed more time Well, we did, we tried to, pros and cons to flying by the seat of your pants. One being that we were going during like spring break week for some people Mm -hmm. and we couldn't find some place to stay Mm -hmm. around that area, which is one reason why we didn't stay. But we, we spent the whole afternoon there and I think. And, and because to, a Joshua Tree, like right outside of there, the little town has mm-hmm. some nice shops, some restaurants. We did stop and eat, um, but some of the shops were already closed by the time that we left out. But it would have been fun to stay and shop and right. leave some money in the local. We did because right. we, we, we ate at the that. restaurant. But but yeah, so we drove from the south to the north entrance. Right. And even just we stopped. We hiked, we explored, we climbed rocks. But even if we had driven straight through, it takes over an hour Mm -hmm. just to make that drive. One, because of the lower speed limit, and Mm -hmm. two... It's about 38 miles. Yeah, the curves. curves. You you can't not stop and look. Yeah. Like, you have to. It's prerequisite that you stop and admire just the beauty out there. So, yeah, um, so worth it. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. theme of our trip we all could have stayed there longer Mm -hmm. and going in march like we did you know spring break week the weather was perfect it was Mm -hmm. cool enough that you were in between needing shorts and pants and the longer we were out there i was not regretting being in shorts so it it was a good time of year but then the sun went down and it got cold fast (laughs) so because you are in the desert so from there uh we stopped, we ate dinner, and we drove the rest of the way to Simi Valley, which, again, I am so sad that it was dark because I feel like we were going downhill the entire way. Mm-hmm. And what I could see in the pale light of the nearly full moon was gorgeous. You should Absolutely. be a travel writer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it was just absolutely gorgeous in the shadows of the mountains (laughs) we drove to our next location and so i am looking forward to possibly making this trip again doing more with it for it Mm -hmm. about it i don't know but it oh yes i I would i just kept like nudging you and trying to get tucker and your mom's attention in the back but again it was dark and i had the advantage of the headlights and all that but uh, just such beautiful area out there Mm -hmm. and then to wake up in simi valley which is beautiful goodness it's a beautiful location in california (laughs) yep and the wedding venue was amazing we stopped at a local farm we picked local produce ourselves which which tucker has been wanting to pick carrots his entire life he told us all four years of it (laughs) all four years of his life he's only wanted to pick Carrot. So we we got to mark that right off of his bucket list. <laughs> Not quite sure why or how or when that got planted in his brain, but uh, yeah, there you go. You you know you get to ride a little um, ride behind a tractor out to the mm-hmm. garden and pet ducks and drive tractors and there's a playground. So it was it was really cute. And then also the Reagan Library is out there. Yes. On a, on a hill or a mountain. Yes. I don't know if that's and considered a hill or a mountain. It's if you're interested beautiful. at all in the nation's history, go. Mm-hmm. Just the scenery alone, but uh, the educational aspect of it. It's a uh, museum and library. You get to see There's and a go. a helicopter and an airplane yeah, inside. Go through Air Force One and Marine One. And yeah, there's 
so much cool stuff out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, congratulations to Colton and Alyssa. Uh, at that point, we uh, went to their wedding. Got yes. them married. Beautiful wedding. Yes. Got them hitched. So uh, beautiful location. Shout out to y'all. You're back from your Hawaiian honeymoon. So beautiful uh, <laughs> dress. Yes. It was all great. And then from there, we left the wedding and turned into birthday mode because our lovely son was turning four and it was like ingrained in my brain. Get him to Radiator Springs on his actual birthday. Which was from the moment I was invited to be part of the wedding, like I could think of nothing else. Like that was, I have to do this for my son, most memorable birthday ever. I set the bar really high. Who knows what we're doing for five? But uh, yes, we were able to get him. Paris. To, yeah. Well, <laughs> Yes. That's that's the other thing on his bucket list: picking carrots and going to Paris. <laughs> Boy's got a strange list, but you know, um, I, I I don't fault him for it. Um, but yes, so just so much fun. I, I put a video on uh, my Instagram story. I may have to share it again, of me walking, holding his hand. You were videoing as we looked through Cars Land at Disney California Adventure. He was definitely excited. Yes. I was more visibly, audibly excited <laughs> than he was because, again, we, as his parents, had been working so hard to make this happen. There were so many things that had to come to pass and, you know, road trip and planning and, and money and, yes, yeah. all these things. So exciting. And like on our way through, lightning comes out and drives right by him. Yeah. Like couldn't have planned it any better. Yeah. It's like there goes lightning. And it's okay. just. Uh, well, and then you have you have the added fact. So it was the question like, are the adults more excited or is he more <laughs> excited? But we have lived through watching all of the Cars movie and times. all of the Mater shorts and it, it pretty much every car thing we we mm -hmm. can watch we've mm -hmm. watched it and yes. we multiple times yes and we can um, quote them all yeah and so we've lived we've lived through um, his enjoyment of the car show my parents who joined us mm -hmm. it probably only joined us to go to radiator springs and see tucker enjoy radiator springs because they've lived through all the right. car shows and pretty much most of the cars he has <laughs> is from them and their excitement that he likes cars right. and they like cars and um so it was it was a magical moment i mean i ha hate to be like um, you know, stereotypical or whatever, but it really was. We, you and I, my parents have been to Disneyland before. I've been to Disneyland. You haven't, but you've been right. to Disney World. Right. So we've all kind of experienced it before and really were like, this trip is for him. Right. If he wants to ride the Mater tractors a thousand times, we're going to ride the Mater tractors a thousand times if he wants. The one thing that we cut off was that Ferris wheel because. <laughs> uh, the swinging part the of swinging part the of Pixar Pal Around uh, Ferris wheel. Oh, boy. <laughs> Did it, didn't work for the adults. No. They need handles in that thing. Yes. <laughs> and seat belts and yeah. a lot of other things. Uh, uh, mm, when did memories. we get to be weenies? I, I, I'm pretty sure it's when I hit He 30. could have kept r riding that. He, I was scared out was, of my mind. So we did ride it a second time on the non-swinging ones, and he was disappointed, which was. his initial reaction to the swinging ones, I think we got it on video, was about the same reaction he had when he was like a little over one year old, and we did the big swing at the Renaissance Renaissance Fair. Fest. Yeah, it, it was... Like, oh my gosh, what's happening? But apparently it, he loved it. So. He loved it. Yeah, but I'd say Thrill when I hit secret. 30, uh, just, mm, nah. um, uh. yeah, uh, so. But it was, it was so surreal to see him see this world in real life, this world that he loves and characters that he loves. And if you haven't been to Disneyland, the Cars characters actually have somebody that, 
actually talks. It's not a recorded conversation. So Lightning McQueen was actually talking to Tucker, told him happy birthday, which he was thrilled about mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. And it was just so sweet. It was, it was real. So uh, I'm just going to, there may be video evidence of that in a YouTube video that dropped yesterday. Watch it till the end. Just, just going to say that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just magical for us, magical for him. I, I am very curious to talk to him five years from now and to get his impression. Because I still remember, you mentioned I went to Disney World. I was nine years old and still remember it and, and all all that went along with that. I do believe personally my fourth birthday is the first one I have faint memories of. So again, you know, his fourth birthday, just big epic trip. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool and yeah. fun to get to bestow on him yeah. and then naturally the, he, he loves mickey mouse too right so the, i mean those he are his two biggies yeah it, those were those are his two biggies uh shows that he watch right watches so and, and so we followed it up the next day going to disneyland proper uh he, he did see mickey and the whole gang at california adventure but he got to see them all again at disneyland the next day and just got to revel in that. We did Dumbo. We did the teacups. We did. He did not want to get off the off Dumbo. No, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was holding on. <laughs> it's like, come on, that's son. not how this works. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for us, as his parents, most rides that he could ride were spinning rides, and <laughs> I can only do so much spinning. <laughs> uh, the second time through the teacups. Whoo, I was, I was about done, but uh, we did the monorail. He loved that. It's Small World. My goodness, I just got that song out of my head. Now I bring it back up. So <laughs> here we are again. But yeah. You know, Peter Pan and yeah. so, those aren't spinning. Very classic Disney experience there as well. Then m- My big thing, I'm a Star Wars nerd. We went to Star Wars Land. We went to Batuu. Uh, Tucker flew the Millennium Falcon. He did. His rendition of how that went is a little different than how it actually happened, but he has fond memories. And we, <laughs> we bumped into a few things, but uh, yeah, he, he quote unquote helped me co pilot the Millennium Falcon. And that, a dream come true. That, that was fun for daddy as well. So yeah. um, the, this is pretty much the point at which we transitioned from one trip to another trip because at California Adventure, we started hitting up all of the attractions that have real life counterparts in um, Radiator Springs and all the uh, inspiration for Radiator Springs of Disney Pixar cars. Mm -hmm. And so you and I filmed a little bit at California Adventure and then the Route 66 road trip was really focused on how much can we see on our way home Mm -hmm. and it was a lot uh what what i actually fit into our video again dropped yesterday uh wigwam blue swallow harvey house del taco oatman arizona hackberry general store seligman arizona uh, meteor city the grand canyon jackrabbit trading post midpoint cafe cadillac ranch paladaro canyon uh the you drop in and, of course, Cars Land uh, at Disney California Adventures. So much Route 66 stuff. But uh, I want to get your thoughts and opinions on it from tourism, from that aspect of it. Oh, from tourism, there's so much. Because I do destination marketing. That's a whole... Let me start with... Um, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget... Um, first of all, if you're planning a Route 66 trip, let me tell you, we did it from a Tuesday through a Sunday and it was not enough time. And we didn't even do the whole thing all the way to Chicago. We just did about half of it. Yeah. We (laughs) didn't even start. I guess you would start at Santa Monica in California. We didn't start there. We started in San Bernardino and, um, and then went to, I guess the last place was Shamrock, Texas, Shamrock, Texas with the U drop in. Um, so 
we did not spend enough time and we I I planned the trip around our cars inspired destination mm-hmm. stops. And I guess what I really want to share is some of the surprising locations okay. that I stopped that we stopped at or some of the surprising things. I know our number 1 I think everyone in the car is number, number one, one is, is the same. Oatman. Yes. Oatman, Arizona. So <laughs> let me tell you how I even found Oatman, Arizona. Okay. okay. So I researched Route 66 routes, and I also researched specifically cars-inspired locations on Route 66. Mm. I went through tons and tons of travel blogs. I found like one sentence in one random cars-inspired Route 66 stop that said in Oatman, Arizona, they have donkeys that just, wild donkeys that just roam the streets. And that was actually the inspiration for the tractors in cars. Even though in the movie they are more cow-like, it was actually the donkeys that inspired the tractors. So I was like, okay, well, I looked it up. And I was like, it's on our way, or it could be on Mm -hmm, our way. mm -hmm. So let's just loop through there, drive through. Mm -hmm. Our ending stop was Lizzie's shop Mm -hmm. in Hackberry, Arizona. And we were trying to make it there before it closed. Mm -hmm. So I really only made, because I had not heard of Oatman anywhere else on any other blogs um, and didn't know if we would even see donkeys, you know. And um, I'm like, we'll just drive through. That's all I made time for, to drive through. Y'all, we could have spent all day there. Yes. <laughs> and in that Driving area, back and forth. <laughs> driving back and forth. It is really small. It's not a lot. But there were some shops. There were um, some restaurants, some bars. I do believe there, there was a motel there. Like. There, could have actually stayed in Oatman. Maybe I mean it's just like you bl- you blink and you're through it. But there were donkeys. Mm-hmm. My mom is making fun of me because I got so excited about the donkeys. She's like, "You've seen a donkey before, but these are celebrity donkeys. <laughs> they are celebrities." So, um, and one of my my thoughts were, if we go out of our way to go through Oatman and there aren't any donkeys, we've kind of wasted our time on our way to see Lizzie's shop. Um, but that area of Arizona was Radiator Springs. Yes. Like you you drive through one one reason it took us so long to get to our next stop is because of the curves. The speed limit. The speed limit. The there's literally the donkeys. There's literally nothing out there. Um there it's in the mountains. There's people mm-hmm. there are houses out there. We're like, where do you do your grocery shopping? It's just it was gorgeous yes beautiful area did not have enough time so that was our number one most surprising yeah underrated locations of all of the route 66 places that we saw um another another interesting thing when we started in san bernardino and this isn't necessary i mean san bernardino is on route 66 um, but these locations aren't necessarily on Route 66. But that is where Taco Bell started mm-hmm. and McDonald's. Mm-hmm. So when you watch the the show or whatever, the original McDonald's, which was a barbecue restaurant, the location is there. And there's actually a museum there. Now, it's not the original building because right. it got torn down. And there is a retro sign there, but it's not the original sign. Right. Um, but it is the original location of the very first McDonald's before it was stolen away, okay. as the movie would have you believe, by the whoever yep. whoever took it um red croc yeah and then actually taco bell which is really interesting um was started from a guy who um what mr bell whatever his name is um had a hamburger shop right across the street from a mexican restaurant mm. that did tacos and did them and he learned how to do their tacos and that Mexican food restaurant is still there today. 
It's a mom and pop shop. Mm -hmm. So there's limited hours. So we weren't Mm -hmm. able to stop and get a taco. But we went to, where was our next stop? That the original Barstow, where the original Del Taco was. was when we went and we went and ate at one of the we, we asked the locals and it's we went and ate at a location that is still owned by the original owner he franchised so, it out there are three that are still run by the original founder and that was one of the three there in the three. Ap- apparently the tacos are and hamburgers are better at that location than any of the other locations who knows who knows but that's what they say but it was really interesting that some of the fast food restaurant staples in this country were started right there in San Bernardino and Barstow. How weird. Right on Route 66. Right on Route 66. It's spitting distance of Route 66. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and another thing, you know, I was really surprised. I know Flagstaff is a big stop on Route 66, but I was really surprised by how much I liked Flagstaff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It our little cabin in the woods yes. <laughs> with the trees. I mean, and, and probably a lot of the reason why I like Flagstaff is the location that we stayed at was so pretty. It was so nice. We got in late and um, there was a fire in the fireplace mm-hmm. going. And so it was just so, it was so nice. We spent a couple days there and it was nice relaxing location i walked out and got an amazing picture of the starry night sky in the silhouette of the trees like it it was very picturesque Picturesque. there and at nearly seven thousand feet of elevation all of our bags of chips puffed up (laughs) i thought that was funny (laughs) but uh because of the elevation it was cooler like i said Mm -hmm. there was snow on the ground did not expect that um just uh, fabulous Fabulous stop. We ate breakfast at uh, Historic Route 66. Oh, yeah. What was that place called? Oh, I found that one. Yeah. Um, something weird. <laughs> it's, um, You're going to make me edit this part out, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Gosh, that was good. It was so good. I, I looked them up on, I guess it was Yelp or something like Ms. that. Miss Zips. So yeah, Miss Zips. That's right. Miss Zips. It was good. I looked them up on Yelp, mm-hmm. and um, we ordered one of everything they have, I think. Yeah. <laughs> our, our table was slightly embarrassing, but it was so good. And we were stuffed because that day we went to the Grand Canyon, so we needed our uh, nutrients. We needed, yes. So, yeah. And then we were starving by the time we got off the mountain and ate some of the best pizza in Flagstaff. <sighs> yes. Okay. So now you're going to make me look that place up as well. Sorry. So. I travel <laughs> by restaurant <laughs> locations. <laughs> yeah. So um, you've heard of Chicago style pizza. You've heard of New York style pizza. Uh, but have you ever heard of Flagstaff, Flagstaff style pizza? pizza? And of course, no, I cannot find the name of the place. That we stopped at. We'll link it in the show right. notes. Because, right. um, man, was it good. It was a local place. They mm-hmm. delivered. Gosh, that was good pizza. Did they deliver to Tyler? <laughs> like, we could call mm, them. Yeah. I mean. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'll be forever finding a pizza that's as good as that. Yes. <laughs> so, while Flagstaff didn't directly influence cars, we had to stop. It was beautiful. Right. Uh, had to go to the Grand Canyon again. Not directly influenced cars uh, by anything. Just but I mean, we're we're there by the Grand right. Canyon. We're gonna see the Grand Canyon. Yeah, none of us had seen the Grand Canyon. And uh, pictures don't do it justice. No, no. Videos I mean, when we got justice. there, I was just like taking pictures, 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 and I finally just stopped because mm-hmm. I'm like, they they don't look as good as what I'm seeing with my eyeballs. But it's another one of those locations that. You can really just stop and hear the nature and take in the majesty mm-hmm. of God's creation. And how just vast it is. It's and, vast. And it was created by water, and there is yeah. a river running through it, but just, just, wow. I like, mean, as, as Tucker put it, he just kept saying, wow, the view sure is big. <laughs> And, and the, I mean, that's the best. It's one of those places that you we cannot believe it until you see it. Right. It does not look real. Right. When you're there. Right. Um, I would agree. 
Or as some of the one star reviews would say, it's just a hole in the ground. What's the big deal? <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong, but uh, yeah, just it, uh, amazing. Yes. Amazing. Um, I'm sure you've heard that. Before. Breathtaking. Like, I have no words. It's yeah. just, it, it's one of those places that you have to see it to believe it. It really is. And I wish we had had more time at the Grand Canyon. That's one of the things, a theme of our trip. Mm-hmm. Like, Tuesday through Sunday was not long enough to see everything as much. And we spent most of the day there. We did take the long way out mm-hmm. back to. Mm-hmm. Um, Highly recommend that. Yes. Out, out the west entrance. I will say. East. Yeah, east entrance. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, I will say that the main entrance of the Green Canyon can get backed up mm-hmm. um, to where there's like a one or two hour. We did not have that problem, which I'm really surprised about since it was spring break. Right. But I have friends who live in the area that still haven't been out there because every time they've gone out there, it's been like a two or three hour wait to get in. Now, you can't avoid that by going through one of the other entrances and not the main entrance. Mm-hmm. Um, the east entrance being one of the recommended ones that you can go through, but it does take you a little bit longer to get there. Right. So your views. Yes, but the view is amazing. Even Absolutely before you get amazing. to the Grand Canyon, you're, you're driving through, I believe it was Navajo Nation. Mm-hmm. And if you know anything about uh, Daylight Savings Time and Arizona, the Navajo Nation does does observe Daylight Savings and the rest of Arizona does not. So the time change was just messed us all up well that that was one of that was my next okay surprising okay. Thing. okay we're well, done talking about the uh the grand, grand canyon. canyon which we could go on and on right except we have no words to describe right. it so we'll so, we'll just leave it at that you gotta yeah. go see it yourself go see it. so okay <laughs> but no so that was my that was my last really surprising thing about this trip is it was really hard to remember what time it was <laughs> Because it's not just a, oh, you're in California, you're two hours behind. Mm -hmm. But we also went like a couple of, a couple days before daylight savings time or, or after daylight savings time. Week after. But in Arizona, they don't observe, the state does not observe daylight saving times. But certain reservations do. Right. So we're in the Grand Canyon. It's one time, which is a different time from home. And then we go through Navajo Nation, which is a different time mm-hmm. from Arizona time and from home. And then you come out of that before you get back to your Airbnb. In and Flagstaff. You're, in <laughs> Flagstaff. And you're at the original Arizona time, which is a different time than home. Right. So you're like, okay, are we, are we in a place that observes daylight savings mm-hmm. time? Are we in a place that doesn't? It was just... It was confusing all the time, especially when there were a couple of places that were like, you have to check in at this certain time. Right. And we're crossing through a couple of states and a couple of different time right. zones. I'm like trying to do the math of what current time do we need to leave in order to make it to this time on time. Baby did a great job. Thank you. It was very stressful. Yes. And uh, it was, yes. Well, by the time we got home, we're like, I don't even know what time it is. Or what anymore. day it is. Or... <laughs> so, um, and, you know, you speak of time and having to check in by certain places. So we left Flagstaff uh, with the ultimate goal of ending up in a city n- neither one of us had ever heard of prior to Tucumcari, Arizona, mm-hmm. which feels a lot like Radiator Springs as well. At night. Yes, especially. Especially at night. But it is the place where the mountain with the RS and Radiator Springs, they have a mountain that has a T at the bottom. Right. That was uh, Cars Inspired. And then the scene at night where they light up all the lights is the strip of Tucumcari. I think we can. And then apparently the hotel owner told us that when you walk out to the street of Route 66, you can see the highway, mm-hmm. um, Interstate 40, going mm-hmm. by. You can see all the cars passing. And when John Lasseter and the crew stayed at their hotel to get inspiration for cars, 
they saw that and you can actually see that in the film as well the cars just passing by route 66 and the business businesses dying and such and so that location we spent the night there it was beautiful glorious uh was a blue swallow motel yes and inspiration for sally's cozy cone yes and is a motor court which one of the one, last one of five one, yeah one of the last motor court, courts left in the united states which means that you can park it's got a garage right next to your room where mm-hmm. you can park your car which is really cool so I found the Blue Swallow Motel. I'd seen it recommended as a place to stay. The thing about Route 66 is it's old, and a lot of the businesses still are not doing well, and they're struggling. Mm -hmm. They're mom-and-pop shops. So it's one of those things that if you're by yourself, you may risk, or, you know, you're a couple, you may risk staying at a shady place. But with a family... I was a little bit more like, I kind of want to see the place mm-hmm. before I stop. But Blue Swallow Motel, everything looked good online, all of that. They had, um, it's one of those places you need to book it Yes, very early. Um, I was having a hard time finding, um, actually, we were going to stay at the Wigwam Hotels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, w- I was having a hard time getting in contact with them to book a room. So I tried to find another place that was around that area. And it was a little bit further, further past that, that area that the blue swallow, that Tucum carry is. And they had one night, it was the night we needed it. And I was like, it, it, you know, it must be fate. Let's let's, it's only one night. If it's, if it's shady, it's only one night. Um, And it was, it was not shady. It was so cute. It's already wants to go back. We well, I want to go, yeah. go back. I mean, it it is, and they do have like cards, uh, murals, and mm-hmm. stuff. But <clears throat> they, it's it is a mom and pop run business. The owners live right there on property, as the original owners did, right. and I I was blown away. It was another place that you're like, we're in cars, we're yeah. in Radiator Springs. Yeah, the- we ate we ate at a local spot called Dell's that is also a Route 66 uh, staple. Staple. Yeah. yeah, it was good. So yeah, uh, Tucum Carry was a nice plus perk benefit, and then uh, we've alluded to it, but our last stop was in uh, Shamrock, Texas. Yes, uh, we stopped at Palo Duro Canyon. Uh, my we didn't su- talk about Midpoint. No, no, I didn't. Okay, thank you. You got to talk yeah. about Midpoint. So uh, Midpoint Cafe, Adrian, Texas, is, as the name suggests, the midpoint of Route 66 from Chicago to L.A. and was the inspiration of Flows. The, yes. Um, not the current owner, but the previous owner was the inspiration for Flow and just great burgers, Better pie. <laughs> they they're known for their ugly crust pies, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I I didn't think it was ugly crust, but apparently the um, recipe was the owner's grandmother's recipe, and she could never make the pies as pretty as her grandmother's. So, it, but she decided. I'm going to give up even trying because it doesn't matter what it looks like. It just matter matters what it tastes like. And let me tell you, the coconut cream pie is the top seller, and it is probably the best coconut cream pie I've ever had, and I've had, had a lot. chocolate peanut butter, uh, and it was amazing. And they have chocolate peanut butter banana. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, yeah. Yeah. It, it was amazing. A great place to stop. Um, and... We can transition this. I know we're running a little long into the destination. As a destination marketer, how did I feel about Route 66? And I will say that there is a lot of opportunity for marketing Route 66. I know people um, know about Route 66, but are people driving it? Right. Local people. They said they get a lot of international mm-hmm, travel. Mm-hmm. So with our borders being closed during COVID, that has really hurt a lot of the businesses along Route 66 and several places that we stopped at 
and had planned to stop at were already closed. And we yeah. feel like probably because of COVID, um, we talked to the owner at Midpoint Cafe and she told us her struggles during COVID. And we, that is the only thing I would say. They, the centennial of Route 66 is coming up in a few years. So I know they're getting their marketing together for that. But I wish several more of the places along the route would get together and just really rally behind these mom and pop shops. We cannot let these places right. die. This is our history. This right. is American history. Route 66 is it's America's Main Street. It's America's Main Street. And if we don't have people rallying behind these businesses, they're going to die. And we can't let that happen. It's right. Yeah. Every place we went, you could talk to the owner. Mm -hmm. You could hear the story. You could hear their stories from other people. And just like the owner at the Blue Swallow Motel was telling us, we we let him know we were going to stop at Midpoint Cafe next. And he was like, oh, we go there. I mean, it was probably two hours right. away. Something like that. Two or three hours away. And he said, oh, we go there all the time. There are neighbors. Right. And that's exactly what the owner at at Midpoint Cafe said too, like they may be two, three, four hours away from us, but they're, they're our neighbors on Route 66. And uh, Blue Swallow also had a mile marker to the Jackrabbit trading post, which mm -hmm. serves as the inspiration for Lindsay's Here It Is sign. Um, he sent us, knowing we were going to Cadillac Ranch, he sent us mm -hmm. with some spray paint, paint. for Cadillac mm -hmm. Ranch. So mm -hmm. just so much fun. And yes, uh, Holly alluded to, we are running a little long. If you want to hear just the last little bit of behind the scenes from our trip, go find us at patreon.com slash GT Garage Talk. And you can hear just a little bit more from our trip. You definitely need to go check out the video that dropped last night on our Route 66 cars themed uh, cars inspired locations that y you can visually see some of these awesome places that we're talking about. But as always, we thank you for listening. We thank you for supporting us and coming back each and every week. Uh, as always, you can find everything we do at gtgaragetalk.com, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that at gtgaragetalk. Until next time, bye. <laughs>